A meteor shower peaks and we explore how you can see hundreds of galaxies that are millions of light years away. Let's take a look at what you can go out to see and image in the night sky for May of 2023. I'm Michael Martin and this is Late Night Astronomy. We start off May with the next major meteor shower of 2023, the Eta Aquarids. Let's load up Sky Safari to see where you need to look to get the best experience with this shower this month. Go out around 4 a.m. in the morning on May 6th and look towards the east. There you will find the constellation Aquarius, where the Eta Aquarids appear to emanate from. Now this meteor shower is a difficult one to see from the northern hemisphere, but can put on a better show for those of you living in the southern hemisphere. The peak of the shower for 2023 is predicted to be in the early morning of May 6th, a few hours before sunrise. Only expect 5 to 10 meteors per hour from this in the northern hemisphere, but the farther south you live, the more meteors you may be able to see, with numbers possibly reaching 20 to 30 meteors per hour. Sadly though, the moon will get in the way of the Eta Aquarids this May, really diminishing their numbers, but that doesn't mean we can't go out and get some good images and observations of the lunar surface. Let's begin this month with the moon by taking a look at the phases, with the full moon that's going to hit right around the peak of the Eta Aquarids on the night of May 5th. Followed by the last quarter moon on May 12th, a new moon on May 19th, and ending with a first quarter moon on May 27th. This month, the moon will make a close pass to Saturn on the early morning of May 13th and Jupiter on May 17th. Switching to the early evening sky, the moon passes by Venus on May 23rd and Mars on May 24th. The best time to go out and observe the moon this month is going to be between the dates of May 22nd and May 27th, when we have the new moon transitioning to a first quarter moon. My lunar observing challenge for you this month is to go out and try to get a picture of Earthshine. This event is best viewed a few days after the new moon and occurs when light reflecting off the Earth illuminates the unlit portion of the moon. It's a really interesting thing to view with the naked eye, a pair of binoculars, or even a low-powered eyepiece in your telescope, and gives the moon a pale glow over its entire surface. If you're able to take a picture of the earth shine or anything else in the night sky this month, please share it with me over on Instagram at Late Night Astronomy. We move from the moon to now the planets of our solar system for the month of May, beginning with the closest planet to the sun, Mercury which sadly is so close to the sun this month that it's practically unobservable until the later part of the month, right before sunrise. Few things involving the planets rival Venus dominating the sky in the west after sunset. It's often mistaken for a plane or a flyover of the International Space Station because of how bright it is. My observing challenge for you this month involving the planets would be to go out to try to see Venus with a pair of binoculars or a telescope. Try to track the phases of this planet as its shadow changes from the start to the end of the month. Image it, sketch it, document it in any way that you can as we go from May, June to July to see the dramatic difference in the surface of Venus from our perspective. As Mars and Earth continue to move away from each other, it continues to become a more dim and difficult target in the night sky, and is also starting to get lower to the horizon in the west after sunset. Jupiter just starts to make its way into the early morning sky towards the end of the month, but it's still not at the best position to go out to observe and image it. Saturn, on the other hand, can give you better views if you're willing to get up at 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning this May. These two planets are just not at the best time and position for most of us right now, but in the coming months, they'll get back into a more enjoyable observing position in the night sky. Uranus trails behind Jupiter, making it a difficult target to see, and Neptune follows behind Saturn a few hours before sunrise in the east. As we leave our solar system behind and travel into deep space, it's important to know that for these objects in particular, you're going to want to be under the darkest skies possible, 
That means getting away from light pollution and making sure that the moon is not in the way as well. I observe the night sky with an 8-inch Dobsonian telescope and image it with the Canon DSLR, Ioptron Skyguider Pro, and Samyang 135mm lens. Every single object in this portion of the video I've either seen visually or imaged through astrophotography under Bortle 4 to Bortle 5 skies. Let's begin the month of May by going out about an hour and a half to two hours after sunset. Look up until you come across the constellation Virgo and a collection of targets that literally has hundreds of galaxies all crammed into one region of space that we call the Virgo Cluster. If you live in an area with limited light pollution, begin by scanning this part of the sky with a pair of binoculars to see what tiny, faint, fuzzy objects you can make out. For most of us, however, a telescope will be needed to begin our study of this region of space. Let's begin in the lower region of Virgo by studying the brightest galaxy in it, which sits at a distance of 54 million light years from Earth, M49. Let's move from M49 up to Virgo A, M87, another impressive galaxy that is pretty close to the center of this galaxy cluster. Be sure your eyes are properly adapted to the dark and spend your time looking for more and more faint fuzzy galaxies popping into the field of view as you scan this part of the night sky. A favorite of mine to image is the Coma Pinwheel Galaxy, whose beautiful blue spiral structure will show up in your astrophotography. As we move back down into the core of Virgo, we come across an incredible view through the eyepiece of your telescope or the lens of your camera, Markarian's Chain. M84 and M86 make up the brightest part of this intergalactic chain of galaxies. The beauty of this particular structure and the immensity of the hundreds of galaxies that make up the Virgo cluster is why I keep coming back to this part of the sky to observe and image every single year. The beauty and scale of the heavens above is shown by few things like the Virgo cluster of galaxies. Those are just some of the best things that you can go out to see and image in the night sky this May. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. But most importantly, let me know what you plan to go out to see and any experiences that you have out observing and imaging the night sky in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.